G'day, everyone. Welcome to episode 107 of the Trade Mate Sports Betting Podcast, a betting preview of the Euros 2021. It's finally time. We have made it. How exciting. As you can see, we have uh, we have quite the stellar cast on today. Your top right-hand corner of your screen is odds compiler turned tipster Nigel Seely, who you're probably quite familiar with. Nigel, how are we? When you said stellar cast, I thought you said we've got someone on on the stellars on 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 the cast. But yes, uh, I'm very I'm very well, and I've had about six. So I'm I'm, I'm ready, ready to go, mate. Ready, ready, ready to go. At responsible drinking out there for everyone. And bottom left hand corner <clears> of your screen is professional sports better Neil Shah. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, good. Really excited to to get the Euros underway finally. Yeah, I've never never heard anyone do so much research for a tournament. So he's come in very informed and ready to go. And bottom well, the more right I'm hand corner, the less I know, to be honest. It's just <laughs> and uh, and bottom right hand corner of your screen is George Gamble. I mean, he's. I mean, I can call him a tipster now. I think, can't I? Ah, oh, tipster, statistician, master statistician, whatever you want to call me, mate. I'll take it. To be honest with you, but uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, Looking forward to the Euros and the Copper America, which I've done quite a bit. Hum, so hum, hum, to. Humble, humble as well. Humble as well. Of course, I learned from the best. But, uh, exactly. Yeah, so you know, I'm yes, looking exactly. forward to getting underway with, with the Euros and the Copper, really. But uh, yeah, looking forward to getting stuck into this one tonight. Gents, it should be a very, very exciting podcast. We're going to go through a quick fire group predictions. We're going to go through our best bets in the outright markets, best bet in the goal scoring markets, in the group markets, and then anything else you guys want to go through. So there's going to be plenty of outright anti-post futures bets, whatever you want to call it, coming your way. Uh, but just a quick disclaimer on the video. This is just something I'm going to do from now on just in case people are new to the channel. Uh, I or no one else on this YouTube channel is a financial advisor. This is just educational content aimed at improving your knowledge about sports betting. There is risk of losing money when betting and what choices you make with your money is up to you. So be responsible, people. Let's let's get right into it. I'll get my little lower third up on the screen. Group A predictions. We'll quickly rifle through each group. You guys have got less than 30 seconds to give me your order on each group. Uh, we'll start with Neil, mate. We've got group A. I will flash up the group markets or the group table here up on your screen. Group A, we have Italy, Switzerland, Turkey, and Wales. Neil, give me your order, mate. Yeah, I'm going um, Italy, Turkey, Wales, then Switzerland. Cool. Nigel? Uh, Italy, Turkey, Switzerland, Wales. Oh, there we go. And uh, and George? Yeah, I'm going to have to concur with Nigel on this one. Italy, clear winners, followed by Turkey, Switzerland, then Wales. Was that all three the same? No, I think it's just... No, no, I had no, it, it, third. Okay. Yeah, Neil went to Switzerland, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, there's, there's an interesting start. Let's go to Group B now. Let's start with Neil once again. What do you got, mate? Yeah, Belgium, Denmark, Russia, Finland. Nigel? Exactly the same. Belgium, Russia. Sorry, Belgium, Denmark, Russia, Finland. Yep. And George? Yeah, to make it a hat trick, Belgium, Denmark, Russia, Finland. Oh, nice. I like it. All right. Group C, we have Netherlands, Ukraine, Austria, and North Macedonia. You start again, Neil. Yeah, the same order as it's there. Um, although I was debating Macedonia to pull off a shot, but I just I don't think it's quite going to happen. So, yeah, uh, Netherlands, Ukraine, Austria, Macedonia. All right, Nigel. Netherlands, Ukraine, Austria, Macedonia. There we go. There's two in a row. And George. Once again, making it a hat-trick. Netherlands, Ukraine, <laughs> Austria, and North Macedonia. This is going to be go. a quick show, right? Uh, this yeah, is yeah. a thrilling podcast so far, fellas. <laughs> wouldn't mind a debate on something. Uh, next, we have Group D, uh, England, Croatia, Scotland, and Czech Republic. Yeah, same, same order as listed there, um, but it's a tricky one. I think that second place could be up for grabs. Yeah, agreed, mate. And Nigel? 
Exactly the same thing. England, Croatia, <laughs> Scotland, <laughs> Czech Republic. Do you want me to come back in about ten minutes when we come past <laughs> yeah. it? When it when it gets when 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 it gets a bit lively. At, at the it's moment, like, I'm thinking we could uh, we could accumulate. I've, I've got a steak. I've got a steak dinner waiting downstairs for this. Come on, <laughs> come on. Let's buy through. Quick fire. All right, George. Come on, mate. This come has got to be the group where you George, give us say, 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 George is going to go Scotland, Czech Republic, Croatia, no. England. England, Croatia, Scotland, Czech Republic. See you later, boys. It's been brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Group E. I mean, I, all I'm thinking right now is we could get a nice little. Uh, what do you call? Could you call it a quaddy or a, a, a first four in order, and then multiply them all together? Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go, Neil. Back. Uh, we'll go Group E, mate. We uh, we've got here Spain, Sweden, Poland, and Slovakia. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. Spain, Sweden, Poland, Slovakia. Although, <laughs> well, I'll have to see with COVID news as well to see see what's happening there. That's something maybe we can talk about later. But yeah, same as this too. Yep, and Nigel, Estonia. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Latvia, <laughs> Latvia. Uh, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go. Spain, uh, Sweden, Poland, Slovakia. Again, I mean, it's you know, it's not not sort of going with the script really. But um, we'll come on to the reasons why that the the, the form team should should dominate these these groups a bit later on. But uh, yeah, that would be my my choice as well. And George, you're going with the same mate, making it yet another hat trick. I mean, I did want to sort of just rock the apple cart and say Poland to come second, but just, yeah, for reasons we'll explain later, I can't. So I'm going to stick with just as it is there as well to make it another hat trick. All right, gents, if there's ever going to be a group where surely we're <laughs> going to disagree on the yeah. order, it's got to be the group of death. Group F, we have some incredible teams in this one, uh, and then Hungary. So we have France, Germany, Hungary, and Portugal. Neil, come on, mate, get us started. Yeah, I'm going to go with Hungary to win the group. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Fra I'm going to go with France, Portugal, Germany, and a Hungary bottom. <clears throat> yeah, okay, very interesting. And Nigel? France, Germany, Portugal, Hungary. Uh, what was it? Hungary? Hungary. Hungary, oh, sorry. And George? I'm getting hungry. You don't know how we are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm going again. Okay, similar France, Germany, Portugal, and Hungary. All right, so we've got a bit of difference there, and I'm sure we'll get to that throughout the podcast. But for now, fellas, we will get started with our best bets of the tournament, what everyone has come here to listen to from the experts. Um, no, we're not looking at that one. We're going to go first with the best bet in the outright market. Who wants to go first? I'll, we'll just stick with the same order for my simple mind and we'll kick it off with Neil. Best bet in the outright market, mate. I'll get up odds checker on my screen just for everyone to have yeah. a quick look at who is favourites. you got France at 5.5, England at sixes and sevens, Belgium next best, Italy, Germany, Portugal, Spain, Netherlands. You get the idea. Neil, kick us off, mate. <clears throat> Yeah, before we all agree, I'm guessing we're all going to agree on France as the kind of the strong favourite here. But um, another selection for me is Italy. I think um, I'm quite interested in their price. I was looking at Spain, but I think uh, the COVID issues are sort of a bit of a concern for me. Um, but I think Italy is uh, are a bit overpriced there. I think I think there's some value. Yeah, they certainly have a really nice draw, don't they? Italy get like they're all their games are at home, right? So. And they're yeah. coming in with a decent bit of momentum ever since Mancini took over. Yeah, I mean they're 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 kind of you know in some ways typically Italian. They're very solid, but they um, they they've got an interesting uh, lineup. They've got some um, some talent up front. You know they've got, they've got um, and they're they're midfield. You know I, I think Verratti. I'm not sure he'll be available for the first couple of games, but even then they've got Locatelli there to to cover. They've got Jorginho. They've got like. Um, um kind of a nice way of, you know and i think um if i'm right i think they're one of the top scorers in qualifying as well some you know more than three and a half goals a game they didn't have the the strongest of opposition but at the same time i think they're a real threat and looking at the draw um you know if they win their group if, uh i think from what i've written here i don't know if that is correct but i think it looks like they'll play um ukraine potentially in the round of 16 
um, potentially Belgium in the quarterfinals, and then maybe a, um, a game against France if France win the group. Um, so I think they've got potential to actually go quite far in this this tournament. They've got the know-how, they've got the the, the, the nous from years gone by, and uh, they're kind of going under the radar a little bit as well. So they're not really being talked about as one of the top 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 team so um yeah I, I think that's an interesting one yeah and i see you have them listed down on our little script here as 12.5 each way but it looks like they've come in since then mate so best think, odds yeah, i can see been. on yeah best odds i can see on italy at the moment are about nine nine so um yeah hopefully uh some people can get a bit better than that but yeah it looks like they've come in in the last couple of days nigel uh where are you going to take me to with your best bet in the outright market well i think the first thing you're going to do in major sporting championships is not really look into what possibly could happen in draws and who can play who and who can do this and who can do that because everything goes out the window in 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 world cup tournaments and and european championship qualifications i've done a lot of these over the years and you can sit down and work out possible routes but uh, it never materializes i mean portugal won the yeah. won won the uh won their their, their um, the championship last year when they come third in the last yeah. european championships when they come third in the group and no one would have seen that so and especially now with like more teams in it you know teams just want to get through the group what you'll find is we'll get rid of the dross very early and we'll the tournament will start effectively at knockout stages because there's going to be uh, six teams in this tournament who are out of their depth so what will happen is that they'll, they'll be they'll be dumped out and suddenly we'll come we'll have a tournament at the knockout stages like a, a grand slam tennis tour where we can see the draw and then then you'll know where the value lies but for me obviously i mean it's not obvious but i think the french at five to one i mean they're they're, they're bit 6.2 on the, the Ben exchanges were they were five to one I mean you've got a tournament here where obviously tournament football injury suspensions are going to come into account COVID is going to play a part obviously Neil touched on the Spanish side but you know during this competition people are going to be affected with COVID at some stage there, there will be people there will be scares at clubs and obviously the, the French side their reserve side could make the semi-finals they're, they're, you know, and, and the only reason they're five to one is because they're in this group that, you know, the, the group of death. But three of teams are going to go through. So they're going to go through. If you look at the route for the third team, it's arguably better than the group, the group for the, the winners, the group for the runners up. So who, but once Spain, once France get into the knockout stages, they know exactly what they've got to do. They're strong in every department. I think the goalkeeper is probably the weakness. I think the, the, the defence is phenomenal. What you got to remember about France as well, everyone knows about their front three and how good they are. They know how to grind matches out. They know how to get matches done. And, that, and Pogba and Kante have just formed this sort of uh, fantastic partnership in the centre of defence in the engine room. And, and, and it's not obvious, but at five to one, they are the bet. They're the world champions. They're five to one. If they were in group B or group C, they'd be five to two. That's the difference. But they're going to get into the knockout stages anyway. Everyone's just looking. Is, if there was two teams qualifying and two teams being eliminated, then I can understand why, why France would be five to one. But the fact is, they're going to get through anyway. So that, that, you know, they, 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 they're going to be okay. So I think the French are the value. I've personally bet Denmark three months ago at eighty to one, at twenty-eight to one. I wouldn't bet them. And I honestly believe that this is a tournament where the cream is going to rise to the top because I do think there's a lot of dross in it. And I think the best teams will come through. With Neil, in terms of um, Italy, they're always going to be hard to beat. But I don't think they've got a, um, a proven goal scorer. I think Immobile yeah. does okay. brilliant in, in in Syria. But at an international level, he doesn't score the goals. And I think it's a big, big negative to start a tournament as favourites. And I think the Italians over the years... Have always let you down, you know, in, in a lot of sports. You know, the Italian the Italian mentality is they're great when they're on top. When the pressure's on the Italian, the mentality they, they're not great. And I think it's a negative for Italy to start the tournament in Rome. I'd rather Italy come in on six games in. I think the pressure's going to be on them um, to start off with a win. And I think if they don't get a win, it, it might be difficult for them. But I, like I say, with with this with this tournament, the tournament's going to come into the last sixteen. So my tip. All, all the way through is the French. Um, I thought Denmark were the bet at, at 80 to 1. I, I've also bet um, Spain, but uh, I'm worried about that. But um, I think the Spanish, with three games at home in the group stages and all three games in Seville, 
where you know I've been out to London. Look at the colour of me today. Oh, I was no. in Seville. I'll be, say, I'll, 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 I'll be as red as uh, your room there when the you know the, you've got the red light on for all the ladies in uh, Melbourne there. But I, I would be as red as that light. But um, I think I think that um, that that the, the, the Spanish at home in those three games in Seville they'll win easy. So I think they're going to come in momentum. But I think obviously you just can't look past the top of the world. I think the French are in a different level to everybody. Yeah. I was going to say with the with the French, would you rather your this team because they're in the group of death? They've got a they've got one of the worst draws out of all the favourites here. Would you would you rather them have a cruisy path all the way to the final and not play no. that many good teams, or would you rather them because they got a bit of travel too between Germany and Hungary? I know it's not far, but would you rather them be battle hardened and then maybe be a little bit more tired towards the end of the? The tournament, or would you rather them have a path, maybe like an Italy or a Spain, where they're playing at home the whole time, easier groups? I like them to start on the front foot. I like the idea of them playing playing in Germany. I like the idea of that. I would, it wouldn't bother me if, if Germany beat them one 0 It wouldn't bother me because they will qualify. They will get through the group, and once it gets to the business end, that they they know what to do. So I, the tournament now really doesn't take any betting shape. If if, if France finished third in the group. Or France finish second in the group, they're still going to be five to one in the knockout stages. It doesn't make really matter. It, whoever wins that group hasn't got a, obviously an easier route, but we still you're still going to run into a decent opposition. And there, there's you know it, the prices aren't. All you're going to do in this tournament is get rid of the 400 one shots, the 300 one shots, the 200 one shots, the 150 one. You might get one shock departure at 20 to one. So you're going to lose about two percent of the book. The market will be exactly the same at, at, at the last 16. Bar, there'd be sort of obviously one team that might have an easier route, but um, I think you want to play the best at the beginning and you want to beat the best. And to go to Germany and win the Germany sets the president straight away. If you can win that game, then you're going to be, you know, to, you know I did, did, however hard Germany are, however poor Germany are at the moment, which they are, they're not the best German side in the world. But to go to Munich and win is a big statement for anybody, yeah. Well, all right, we'll see, mate. That was um, that was some terrific insight, especially from a from a former odds compiler. I think um, people can learn a lot from that in terms of how the betting market shapes up as the tournament goes on. George Gamble, what is your best bet in the outright market, mate? Well, it's going to be no surprise that yet again I'm making a hat trick, but uh, obviously it was going to be France. But I think everyone's kind of covered every aspect of it from the notes that I've made here. Anyway, they've kind of all been covered, really. Um, you know, as Nigel just mentioned, for me, if if they can go to Germany in Munich and pick up a result, obviously it puts them on that front foot straight away. That was kind of a big thing for me. Um, but yeah, I don't think you can look past France. Interestingly, similar to Neil, I had a sort of brief look at Italy and obviously at first I was sort of like, you know, Immobile is going to be playing alongside potentially the likes of Insignia and Chiesa who've both had 17 assists between them this campaign and, you know, Immobile is equal, I think, the goal scoring record in Serie A but then obviously I look further as well, it, it doesn't really translate to, to the national side and and I do sort of wonder as well, going on into the tournament, obviously we've mentioned that, you know, suspensions and that kind of thing can play a part and the last two European championships, Italy have received the most booking points out of any other side. Um, so you know, they're not shy of kind of getting into the book and we could see that sort of play out later on in the tournament uh, to the you know, detriment of them winning. Um, but yeah, so for me, I don't think you can look, I don't. I, I like Italy at those prices, but with everything that's going on, I don't think I'd be touching it. So for me, I think France, I don't think you can look past France. Interesting that none of you have mentioned the second and third favourites, the, the, the team they call England, who... A lot of you are probably wanting to to win, and you, none of you have mentioned Belgium. Um, any reason why? I mean, I'm throwing this out to all of you, I guess. But any reason why you guys haven't wanted to touch on those teams? You just don't see any value there, or you think they're just absolutely no chance. Well, I, I, my lot, the two things for me about both things: size and the manager. I think Gareth Southgate is a great man media man i think he's a great guy with the team every player who goes to england loves it under capella they hated it under Sven gronix and they hate it but if you're in a world cup quarter final and you're, you're one nil down against italy i don't i wouldn't trust gareth southgate to make the right tactical decisions and i and i think he's, he's however well he is as a, as a media man i don't think he's and, and also i think england going forward are the best team in the competition along with france but i think defensively they're shocking and I also think the goalkeeper is the huge, huge problem for them. I, I, I genuinely do. And um, 
I think that's the big problem. With, with, with regards to Belgium, Belgium, to me, are flat-track bullies. They they beat teams 6-0, 7-0 in qualifying. They'll they'll come through the group stage winning 3, 4, 5 nil, and they'll play um, they'll play a, a more uh, sophisticated side, a little bit more nous about them in, in European football, and they'll get beat like they did against France in in the World Cup, and and that's that's how I feel that uh, they mm-hmm. are. And I think both of them are to do with their manager. I, I think the manager just isn't hasn't got that experience or hasn't got that international know-how, and that's where I feel like a lot of you know. Deschamps, who's won a World Cup, has got that extra uh, advantage in, in, in how he how he sets up a team to win a match in the knockout stages. Yeah, Belgium with an average of three point three five goals in their last twenty three games. I've come out with the stats here, George. Mate, you're gonna have to pick up your game. But um, yeah, like you said, mate, they do like to score some goals. Why don't we move on, gents? Good start with the um, with the outright market there. We'll go on to the group market. So this is a bit of a an open market here. You can give me your best bet in the group markets. If maybe a, a team to advance through the groups, to to not advance, maybe to win the group, dual forecast, maybe. You know, there's all sorts of group bets you can give me here. But, Neil, we will start off with you, mate. Where are you going to take me in your group market bet? Uh, yeah, so what I was I was looking at was was Germany not to qualify. So um, I've got odds of eight on that. Uh, just looking at, um, obviously, you know, the, the, there's a good chance they will, you know, even if they do get third place. But if they do, if they do lose to France and Portugal, then, um, you know, depending on what happens in all the other groups, there could be some strange results. I think this Euros, um, again, if it, it kind of has echoes of um, the World Cup 2002. I think there's a lot of teams who, because of the extended season, because of all the, the, the minutes um, that have been played by a lot of teams, I think there's going to be some strange results. And I think, um, again, um, the Hungary game, I uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember if, if the Germany Hungary game is in in Hungary or in in, in Munich. But I know it's in Munich. It's in Munich. Is in Munich. Yeah. So I mean, again, it's a home crowd for Germany there. But um, again, going into that game, um, who knows? It could be a potential banana skin, depending on all the other groups as well. I think I think there's a chance. I think there's a better chance than the odds imply that. And they might miss out. I think there's um, been a lot of problems in the Germany camp. They did well. They you know, beat Latvia the other day, um, but you know they did concede a goal. I know they won seven one, but um, I think there's potential for a Germany collapse in this tournament. So uh, yeah, that would be my my pick. There's some forecasts as well, but I'm sure the guys will. I, I like those ones that the the guys are on as well. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, Nigel, you talked a lot about then about the group of death and how you think three will go through, but we are talking about some big odds here at eight. So it's not as if Neil's saying it's definitely going to happen, but he sees a little bit of value there. What do you think about that? Well, I think the Germans aren't the best German team in the world, but like an, an old cliche, you never, you never brought up the Germans. They know how to win tournaments. Obviously, if the manager's the last tournament, you're going to get a little extra bit out of the players. They've, they've got a lot of high profile. There's a young side. Um, you know, you're talking about two players in Werner and Havertz who have arguably, people are saying they've been a bit flops. They're Champions League winners. They're full of confidence, you know. Um, the th- one thing I would say, I think with Hungary, I mean, Hungary, everyone, I'm, I'm going to go on to my bets, but just in that group, I think Hungary, the Puskas Arena is going to be one of the only uh, uh, places in the tournament that's going to have a full capacity. Yeah. It's going to have 68,000 people at that game. Now, Portugal go their first game. Now, everyone can remember Portugal winning the Euros last year, but I remember a lot of uh, the last European championship, but not last year, but uh, I remember a lot of European championships and Portugal have been a big, big disappointment and they've never, ever lived up to the expectation. And um, I don't think that's going to be easy for Portugal in the first game to go to Hungary. So I think that that group may, may have a lot of twists and turns as it goes on. And I, and I, I think that might be difficult uh, for me. Uh, my best bet and the biggest bet I've had, in the whole of the of the tournament, it was and and I couldn't believe they kept the price for so long. It was in Group B. Um, I bet uh, Belgium and Denmark in a dual forecast. They even money. Um, Finland's uh, Puky's got a, a ligament problem. He probably he, he might not start. So Finland just they just defend. They just a, they put ten men behind the ball and try to frustrate. And up against Denmark and uh, and Belgium, I think Belgium, as we know, I think Russia have gone massively backwards. And um, the price was even money. Corals and Labrooks uh, were even money when you could lay it at 1.8 on the exchange. And um, I was amazed they kept it 
for, for so long they kept it for three days i've had like a big amount a big amount on it you know what i mean next next time you um if you come to me and they don't win, I'll be in George's nan's house with him. But um, <laughs> the, 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 um, the thing is, is that I thought that was, I thought that was the best bet of the tournament. I thought that was the best group bet in the world. Cause I think those two are on a different level to Finland and Russia. And I think, you know, they, they're, they're really good. The other bet I bet is uh, Slovakia to finish bottom of their group. I'm massively against Slovakia. I'm massively against Finland in goals in every side, in sign of, um, every kind of capacity. I think Slovakia are a side that, um, if you look at the goal XG, they were the lowest XG in qualification. If you look at their qualification group, uh, they had come third against the likes of Croatia, Wales, uh, Hungary. They only scored, what did they score? Uh, 13 goals and seven of them come against Azerbaijan. So um, that shows you, you know, that's against the likes of Croatia and Wales. Now they're up against Sweden, Spain in Seville and Poland with Lewandowski. But I think they were like, four to five to finish bottom of that group so 1.8 to finish bottom of uh, of that group which I, I i bet quite quite heavily uh and the other bet i had is um i've bet uh in the group with um the ukraine i bet uh who, who, holland and ukraine in the dual forecast but um i think the best bet would be um is it holland the ukraine or is it oh is it i've got the wrong group uh, no, it's, 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 the, it's the right group. You just pick, you just pinched my preference. Oh, sorry, sorry, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. The <laughs> but I think I think the, the, you can come on to that, George. But I won't go on. But my my best bet, yeah, it was even money. Was uh, Denmark and Belgium in a um, a dual forecast uh, in, in Group B? Yeah, I've just got the odds up on the screen there, so you can still get that at one point nine one on Betway. And I think that's a big price. That, I still think that's a. I think that's a one point nine one. I think on the exchanges, you could yesterday you could lay it around about one point eight one. Um, so yeah, it was it, 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 it was it was. It, but the thing is, Coral and Labrooks aren't on odds checker, obviously, and they were even money, and um, that's to me just. I think that's that's hugely wrong. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think you could get even better than evens on, on Ladbrokes earlier in the week too. Um, George, mate, I think uh, Nigel's given away your bet, mate, but why don't you just give me a well, reason if, if, behind if he, if, he, if he put the, the bets into the group as a yeah, team yeah. player point, like point, he should point. do, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that, would I? Come on, George, come on. It's, it's my own fault, it's my own fault. But uh, no, me and Nigel spoke uh, previously and obviously we both sort of mentioned we quite like that uh, the Belgium-Denmark bet. It just sort of screamed out to me when I saw it. Um, but yeah, the other one for me that I really like is the, the dual forecast of the Netherlands and Ukraine uh, to finish either first or second, respectively. Um, it's looking at, at the moment, I think that's around two, or, yeah, converted to decimals, 2.2. .2. That was on, that's on Coral as well. I just think that these two sides are a sheer class apart from the other two in the teams. You've got North Macedonia, obviously the first time they've qualified for a major tournament. And I think more than anything, they're, you know, they're the right side, but they're just nowhere near the quality of the other two. And they're just going to be happy to be there. As we said, it's their first time there. They're going to lap up the occasion. Um, and Austria, just a little bit toothless in my opinion. They just, I don't rate them at all. I don't see them picking up any results against the likes of Netherlands or Ukraine. Um, and I really like Ukraine. Call it sort of blue tinted specs. We've obviously got Zinchenko, who's the kind of one of the star men there. And that they're a very good youthful side. Um, they've got a really good balance. Um, and I do think they'll push the Netherlands ridiculously close um, in this group. Because with the Netherlands, you know, you've, the main man is Memphis Depay. Obviously, he plays on the wing, so he's not like a, a born and bred finisher. Um, and I think with this one, you're likely to see uh, an emergence of uh, Weghorst, I think I pronounced that correctly, who plies his trade in the Bundesliga with Wolfsburg. And he's had a fantastic season. Um, and he's just started to get a few games for, for the Netherlands. So obviously he's going to be wanting to impress on that main stage. So in my opinion, yeah, the Netherlands could go ahead and absolutely just destroy this group and win it at a canter. But I think Ukraine, in my opinion, I do think Ukraine are going to push them close. So for me... It makes sense for Netherlands and Ukraine to finish, you know, as a dual forecast to finish first and second respectively in this group. At two point two as well. That's that's a hell of a price for me. Yeah, you can yeah. get two point two five at Bet Victor. Sorry, Neil, go ahead. No, I was going to say just to add to to what George saying, one hundred percent. Like uh, I've I've got them as a, a I think I found found them at sevens at a Sporting Index uh, to top the group because I think again, you know, they've got a good chance. I think. I'm not a huge fan of um, uh, of De Boer, and um, again, they've kind of regressed since. Like, I think they were sort of making progress under Kuman, um, but again, I think they're vulnerable there. The other thing is with Ukraine is they're the freshest team 
at the tournament um, because they've had issues with COVID, because there's been suspensions in the domestic league. Um, you know, even my players like Malinovsky, like, you know, hasn't been a regular all season for Atalanta. So um, I think they'll have fresh legs. And I think that's a big thing at this tournament. I think, is you know, it could be something that pushes them over the line. So, you know, 100% I agree with George on that. They've had some great results as well. You've got to think, obviously, they... Yeah, absolutely. Had a, well, um, I'm not too... The group ago, front, they? Do they hold France? Yeah, as well. You know, they're, they're a good side. They work hard. They're full of energy. Um, and yeah, I don't see how the Netherlands and Ukraine don't finish uh, first and second in this group. So yeah, no brainer for me, in particular that price. All right, love it, gents. Let's move on then. Once again, we're going to go to our best bets in the goal scorer markets. Neil, do you want to kick us off, mate? So we can go. Yeah, you can go top goal scorer for the tournament or a particular team. Maybe you want to talk about a team being the lowest scoring side, something like that. Uh, can be a range of things. Neil, go ahead, mate. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the sort of the standout choice for me is Lukaku. I think that's kind of you know, it's very popular. A lot of people, obviously, the price is sort of reflecting in that. Um, maybe something to consider on the goal scoring markets. I'm I'm still having a look at some of these, but uh, for some of these teams like like Slovakia, like Finland, like Macedonia, is is maybe looking at the no goal scorer market. Maybe some people haven't considered that. Um, if you do think, you know, a few of these teams aren't going to get a goal, um, or, or like Hungary as well, you know, with no uh, slobbers lie, that's that's a big loss for them. To see where where the goals might come from. Um, but yeah, I, I think Lukaku is a, a, a shout. Um, having looked at it, it's, it's a hard, hard to see really. I think Veghorst, um, as an outside one, again, that depends on, on um, how far they progress. I, I've got a bet on, on Depay as well. Um, but I, I, it really depends. I think there's just considering if teams, again, with this new format, if three teams go through. Um, you know, some teams might rest their players. Maybe even you know, Belgium, for example, might rest Lukaku on the third game. Um, you know, obviously, if England progress and they do well, then Harry Kane is a real shout. But um, again, that's whether you think they're going to get past a round of 16. Um, I've seen Benzema tipped up in a few places. For me, I think the goals are going to be spread around that French team. So, um, and I think, did he miss a penalty the other day in, in one of these friendlies? Um, so again, I'm not 100% he'll be on, on pens. Um, I mean, look, Ronaldo's there. You, you wouldn't bet against him. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's one as well. I mean, Lewandowski, fantastic player, but then is he going to get the service? His tournament record isn't great, again, because of his kind of supporting cast around him. I think Milic is out now, so um, you know there's even more onus on him. But um, I think it's tricky to find. I mean, anyone again at those odds with the, the opponents they're going to face. I think Lukaku is the um, the standout candidate. But if you want to have a few long shots, you know, even someone like Eriksen could be, could be uh, a wild wild card. Or Yilmaz as well. I do like Yilmaz as an outside shot, but again, his odds have kind of come in quite a bit. Yeah, I think I think Lukaku was at nine when it all opened up, but he's coming yeah. to. 7.5, and I mean 6.5 in some bookmakers. I saw here that you wrote down uh, Ericsson and Muller to top score for their respective sides. Yeah, actually, yeah. So Ericsson, I think I, I do like that. I think with uh, with Denmark, um, you know, they've got Poulsen, they've got Braithwaite, um, who can chip in, um, but he's not 100% sure who they'll go up with as the kind of the focal point um, if it's a uh, wind uh, up there. Um, and again, it takes penalties, takes free kicks. He's kind of given this kind of license to roam in that Danish side. Um, and again, you know, kind of the, the, these big, you can shoot from distance. I just think at the, at the price, um, I, I think he's a good shout. Definitely. All right. Awesome, mate. Kane, for you, I see Mr. Seely. Not to win the, not to be the top goal scorer in a tournament. I think if you look, if you're betting on a goal scorer in a tournament, it obviously it's, it's you know, it's, it's common sense. You want to be with a side that's going to we got a chance of winning it. You got to be with a penalty taker, that helps. And you've got to be with a team that's the you're the sole man to be the top goal scorer. You look at the French side there. We've mentioned Benzema, Griezmann, and Mbappe. Those yeah. three are in the top. Those three are in the top six of the betting. They're going to share the goals amongst them. 
So Lukaku is the obvious one for me. They're, they're, they're the team that are in for the highest amount of goals in the tournament. If you look at the uh, the spread betting, Belgium are the, considered the, the favourites to score the most goals in the tournament. And like I say, in group stages, they'll, they'll win four or five. You know, they're, they're, they're that kind of side. The other thing that Neil said is a very important factor as well, is that you, you want to be able... You, you, the last game, if you won two games, they may rest players. But with, with Belgium, they've got the two most difficult games first. And if they're mm. on four points, they may have to go into the Finland game to win or three or four. And if a team like Finland or a team like Hungary or a team who are at the bottom of the table have lost two games in the group and they know they're going home, they usually down tools. You usually find the goals. If you look at the goal, you look at the goals at the last final games or group games in your World Cups and the goal, the last games. So you, if you've got a player going in in the last game, I remember many years ago before you lot were even probably born in the World Cup in 1990. Back in my I was, day, I was 21. It was 1994 in the in the uh, in the World Cup. Uh, Russia played in a, a non-event and. Uh, Oleg Selenko scored five yeah. goals in one game, right? In the last game. That, and he was, didn't play other game. He was top goal scorer. These are the kind of games you look at. Look at the last games. Look at the ones who've got the minnows. Look at the ones who've got the minnows. They play, they, they might need to win. So I think Lukaku ticks every box. But my best bet is obviously Harry Kane to be the top England goal scorer. I think Harry Kane, I couldn't believe he was 2.2 a week ago. 2.2. I mean, I, again... You know, it, it, it was it, just to me, it just made no sense because if you look at all of the England's career, every single thing about England is created around Harry Kane. The whole system is evolved. How do we get the best out of Harry Kane? What players can we get to supply them on? If you look at the people in the betting after that, Rashford, Sterling, they're like the second favourites. They're not even favourites to make the, the first 11. You know, Kane will play every game. We've got Mount, you've got Foden, you've got Grealish. Really, between those five, can you guarantee that those people will play three games? Harry Kane will play every minute of every single game in this competition, bar an injury. And the other thing about England, as we saw in the friendly the other night, they'll get loads of penalties. Because with the, with the way they play, the way they play with that midfield, and the way they break with pace, Grealish breaks, people will be scared shitless of them. They'll be bombing forward, and they will get they will get fouled. They'll get penalties to get free kicks in the box. And Kane is pretty lethal. I mean, he was top goal scorer in the World Cup because he got three penalties, didn't he, in regular time or something like that in the yeah. last World Cup. But that I think Harry Kane at anything around even money to be the top England goal scorer is 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 is. is just a great bet because Lewandowski at Poland is one to three to be the top goal scorer at Poland. Harry Kane is even money. You've got to remember as well, Poland are in for probably three goals in the tournament. So the chances of a three on shot getting turned over with three goals. England, what, for eight goals? Kane at even money all day long. All day long. All I, right. think it, I think I read somewhere he's, was it, he contributed about a third of England's goals in qualifying as well. So, I mean... Yeah. If you look at it, oh, he's got 30, 30, 34 goals in it, in, and only, only two other players in the squad have got double figures and both of them aren't regular, not certain to play. Mm -hmm. But the, the whole system is, the whole England team is built around Harry Kane. We can't play another striker with him because he's, you get the best out of him coming deep. You know, you've got to play the ball into him and, and it, where, where the, the, this, all the next lists in the betting, the second, third, fourth favourite in the England market, none of them are guaranteed to play. It's just no brainer. All right, love it, mate. Lowest odds you take on that one, Nige? Sorry, what lower, lowest odds you would take on that? Oh, bet, mate? I mean, I, I think you should, I take I take ten to eleven, one point nine, something like that. I mean, the the thing is with him, it, it, you know, barring injury, he will play every game. That that's the key. And, and that's all you want. And, and I think, you know, if you look at some other players, you know, we look at the Spanish teams and stuff like that. It's a lot of people. Are, we, we can't really second guess that side. But 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 Harry Kane, I mean, at 10 to 11, 1.9. No. Two goals will win it, wouldn't it? Two goals will win it. Three, dead heat. Dead heat. If you get two goals, three goals, you won it. He'll get yep. if England have got England in for nine goals in the tournament, and you say he's in for a, a third of the goals in qualification, he's going to he's got three goals. I think Harry Kane's good thing. Yeah, I've been yeah. trying to get the odds up on my screen here. I don't know what they are currently, but I'll uh, I'll see if I can get to that sooner or later. But in the meantime, how about our man George Gamble, mate? What are you looking at in the goal scorer markets? Yeah, again, this is the problem with going last. A lot of your points get covered. 
So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, mate, next time but I'll no, let no, you go fine. first. No, it's, it's all right. I'm happy. But uh, no, yeah, obviously, we've already mentioned about Lukaku for me. It's uh, again kind of the obvious one for all the reasons Nia just alluded to. And I was just kind of just going pretty, well quickly over the stats, you know. 30 goals and 44 appearances for Inter Milan this season. But since making his international debut in 2010, he's got 74 goal involvements in 93 appearances. Um, he scores a ridiculous number of goals as well. It's just, yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised to see the odds on him to be top goal scorer, especially when you consider, for example, if he gets off to a flyer in the group stage, as you could argue there's somewhat apart from Denmark, cannon fodder, then, you know, he could be away straight away. And I, I think the price on Dukaku is, is brilliant. But also looking at stats, because would be me about stats. Four of the last 13 sort of major tournaments um, have seen a top scorer inside 10 to 1, just four of them. Um, so looking at kind of the ones outside 20 to 1, I know earlier we said his uh, his goals don't necessarily translate to the international stage, but I think I still think Immobile could be overpriced at 20 to 1. Um, I just sort of looked at it and I thought it seems a bit big. You know, he could they're going to create chances for him and if he can slot, I don't see a reason why he can't be at least up there and challenging. And a 20 to 1, I thought that was brilliant odds. I mean, I wouldn't have much lower than I'd say maybe that 15 to 1 on him. But 20 to 1, I thought was a bit long. Like I said earlier, you know, you've got Chiesa and Insignia probably alongside him with 17 assists between them this season. Yeah, I just, I just thought the odds were a bit high. I mean, Lukaku is the main one that I'm on. I, I think that's, uh, for me, a very solid bet. But I think if I was going to have an outside punt, like I said, four of the last 13, only four of the last 13 have seen a top score inside. 10 to 1. And Mobley at 20 to 1 looks a potential shout for me. Yeah, yeah. he's playing in his home stadium as well, isn't he? I think in the Olympico, right? So, I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, small margins, but, you know, he knows where the goals are there. So, and I know Nigel mentioned earlier the Italians don't deal well with pressure, but again, sometimes it, it, it works for you, doesn't it? And notoriously, the Italians struggle with it, but. I just feel the odds are twenty to one. Everything's there for him to kind of potentially do it. So the, the problem, the problem with the Italian mentality in major tournaments is they get one nil up and then they shut up from their defence. Yeah. Whereas England, England and Belgium are much more offensive. They go out and England will be involved in games that are four two, three two. Belgium in goals that four one. The Italians are so confident that their two centre defenders will be able to. Obviously, Serie A this season has been very different. There's been a lot of goals, a lot of high. It, it, it's, it's been. A, probably the highest ever ta goal tally in, in, in Italy this season. But on an international level, they just, they just, you know, they just get one nil wins. And I think with, with, with this tournament and, you know, it, you just want a team that's going to be a little bit more attack minded, a little bit sort of, that will go out. And, and I think England games in this tournament will be very entertaining. I think both teams will score in a lot of yeah. England games. I think there'll be three ones, four ones, because that's how we play. You know, we're, 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 our best strength is on the front foot and the same with Belgium. Whereas I think the Italians are probably a little bit more still reliant on the defence, so they could still win the tournament, but they could probably own, they could probably score seven goals or eight goals. Whereas if Belgium or an England side went on to win the tournament, they could score 14, 15 goals. So I think that's where the angle comes in. Yeah, I mean, I do sort of I I agree with you. I also think that you know Mancini is quite obvious that he's been sort of favouring uh, centre half. Is it Chiellini and Benucci? And obviously they've got Bastoni, who's obviously brilliant, but if they're getting on a bit now, you know, they could get run ragging. If they find themselves a goal down, they're chasing the game. You know, I think then Immobile's, Immobile's the man. I'm just saying, I think I don't... Lukaku's my main bet, but I think at 20 to 1, Immobile is slightly overpriced. The, the other thing as well, just just, just, just about Italy, I'm just, I'm only just... just thought, really, Italy v Switzerland will be of goals. I mean, you'll be... Yeah, well, on the well. It'll be around about a two and a quarter goal game. Italy v Wales could be, you know, the first game is always low goals and you, you usually win it on the group stages. So but when 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 uh, Belgium play, their goals will be 2.8, you know, in, on the spreads, 2.9. They'll be over two points. It'll be a, an Asian line of 2.75. So their goals, expectations in those games are going to be very high. Same with England's. So um, that's the only thing. I mean, that that I mean, anybody could, look, anybody could get a hat trick yeah, and cool. from out of nowhere, and nobody could get a hat trick. But I think the it's, it's, it's Italian games will be very very low scoring in their group stage, and I think they're you know Switzerland are very defensive. The Welsh have got nothing really apart from Gareth Bale, uh, and obviously the first game against Turkey is going to be tight. You know, the first games are always tight. So that that would be my only suggestion. But you you want someone in a group that's got four goals headed into the knockout stages. And I just don't think he's going to get four goals in that stage. 
No, hence why obviously Lukaku is my main pun. I, I just like as an outside, you know, in terms of the main one, Lukaku all day long. But Immobile for me is an outside chance is is worth you know a point or two. All right, gents, terrific stuff. Let's uh, finish things off with our other bets, best bets in the tournament. I mean, there's so many markets out there in the in the outrights. Uh, you could take me to the best young player, best player in the tournament, maybe an under or overs on how many goals a team will score. Uh, George, mate, do you want me to go to you first, mate, just so I don't hurt your feelings and you don't get I mean, your bets still stolen away from you? I'm just going through mine, just to try and recall. Oh, there we go. Yeah, no, that's my favourite one. Do you want me to go first? I'll happily yeah, go first. Yeah, mate, you can so, go first. Where do you where yeah, are you reading so, up? You, it's obviously clearly not something you sent us. So where are you no, reading I've not this sent it to you at all. I did, oh, do you know what? I did not even <laughs> see that message. Of, oh, yeah, send it all over. I've, He's on Premier no Sports Plays. What's Premier Sports Plays? Best bets? or? <laughs> He's reading my previews. He's reading my previews. I'll give you a brilliant goal score in the Cup of America. <laughs> 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 oh my word about 150 to 1 wasn't it <laughs> yeah 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 well good <laughs> no my favourite one uh, for this one is a, a bet I just really like like I said Italy they're uh, they've been the most carded side in the last two European championships and with an age in defence I think they're going to be tested you know you know, Switzerland don't score many goals but I think Turkey could obviously um, since you give them a game they're very you know, they've got goals in their side and I think that they'll still try and obviously get a few goals against Italy and with this ageing centre-back partnership that Mancini seems to love, I think they might come unstuck at some points. And I think Italy, to be the most booked side at Euro 2020, I've got it 12-1 to 1 is in with the shout. It's happened the last two times. We know what Italy are like. Nigel's already said, you know, if they get that one goal win, they go defensive. They don't want to let up. They'll shut up shop. And, you know, they, call, they make cynical fouls. It's what Italy do. So at 12-1, to 1, and obviously, like in the cards, I thought that was a great shout. Yeah, who are the, who are the favourites in that market? Favourites in that market to what get right back up here and you looked at Italy, but it's actually France at uh, yeah fifteen to two. Who are the favourites to get the it's most? Because it's, it's obviously that the, the tournament favourites will be the favourites as they progress. But obviously, like if Italy go one nil down in a quarter final or semi final, they their potential is to to lose their heads, couldn't they? And they can get yeah, four exactly. or five bookings of colour scene offs, but. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, so I really like that available at most books that market, George. Um, I had to scour around, so it's on William Hill at the moment. That was uh, where it definitely was. I don't think many other um, places are offering it as of yet. But um, yeah, if you want to definitely get on that, get on William Hill because uh, Italy at the moment. Just have a look through here. Yeah, it's still twelve to one. But I'm very surprised. It's uh, like that's still there, if I'm honest. All right, I love that, mate. Good to see you've somehow mixed the cards in, mate. I knew you'd find a way. Oh, mate. Wouldn't be me last it, would it? <laughs> Let's go reverse order. We'll go Nigel, mate. Where where are you taking it's me? It's, here no, it's than... no reverse order to me. I'm always second. <laughs> like, where, where has that helped me out? I'm you know, reverse order. Like, All right, mate. On. Neil, you go first. No, then. no, I am joking. I'm joking. Second. I am um, Alex, you're right, mate. Think, are you okay? I, I think um well I, I touch on it. I mean the, my biggest bet of the um the tournament is that uh group B dual forecast of Belgium and Denmark at even money. But uh, if you're looking for an outsider and something that I thought was value, and I, and I looked at the notes I sent you when we when we'd done this, when George went missing for a couple of days and we all in the, t- the team, the team of the team was getting involved and George went on the sunbed or wherever he'd gone. We, um, we, um, I, I made a point. I, 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 I bet Kante at um, 33 to one to be the, uh, the player of the, the tournament he's now 20 to 1 you know i missed the boat but even at 20 to 1 i think he's a bet i think i think you know pogba and him everyone goes on about the french and you've got to remember in, in these t- tournaments now uh, and these these awards now for years gone by if you were a, a center forward or you're a flair player you had a good chance of winning awards does not necessarily anymore i mean the, the, the pfa player of the year for the last two years has been a center half diaz has won it and van dyke has won it um, people are actually sort of the, the, the modern game now is about work rate. You know, it's, it, you've got very, you've got very many really f- great flair players out there uh, out in the world now. It's very different now. It's about work rate and, and and effort. And I think what Kante does is probably the most key role in modern day football. And it, it was the man of the match in the, in the Champions League. He got a standing ovation um, 
at half time in a in a in a in a, a, a friendly last week last night was he hung hungry when he, he come off it the whole place was going crazy and, and capping him off the pitch and i think him and pogba are in that midfield for uh, for france they're the engine room that get get everything out the best of the other players he'll cover every blade of grass he'll play every game and i think he's full of confidence and he's on there's on the high of his high of his life in his career and i think can say a, a a decent price um 20 to 1 now but he was 33s but to be the player of the tournament i love that bit yeah. he's so popular as well like you know, there's no one who can say yeah. a bad word about just a him. lovely guy just a lovely guy yeah, like me good. like me you know if there was a yeah. if there was an award for the best um trade mate sports betting podcast judge I, you know it's, it's a it's a no brainer he's a nice guy gets some of his studs covers every blade of grass you know puts in so stuff humble. Um, so humble. Put, 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 puts in stuff put when, when, when alex asks you questions on on the on the whatsapp group and on the on the always there to like whatever time of day doesn't just ignore anyone and like like like, <laughs> like gamble Sorry. like gamble what yeah, what's yeah aren't you group? invited are you me, neil me and neil are in the whatsapp group haven't you got the invite yeah. yet george i wonder why you're not involved you're not a team player <laughs> It's outrageous, absolutely outrageous. All right, Neil, mate, let's get this back on track, mate. What's your best other yeah, bit? Well, of I, I don't know if I can, I can top that, but um, <laughs> yeah, no, a, couple, a couple of things. Um, well, I mean, look, obviously, massive price, but you know, I, I do like this if you want a kind of you know, big price selection. Um, Lukaku, top scorer of France to win, you know, again, combining these two favorite bets. Um, they had it up at Betfred for si uh, um, 66 to 1. Um, but that that's kind of long gone, I think. But I think I, I did find it at Bet Victor, um, 55, 55 to one. Um, I, I like it, you know, just as a play. Um, you know, it's, it's a big price, but again, you know, good chances of, of, of that coming in. So that's one. The other one was um, young player of the tournament. I'd be interested to get uh, George's views on this, as he he would know. Um, what about me? So, what about me? Oh, and Nigel as well. As as a Man City <laughs> fan, yeah, as a Man City fan. Well, uh, I'm off now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Fer Ferran Torres as a young player of the tournament. Um, yeah, looking at this market again, I mean, I think about Mason Mount, and they had um, um, again Phil Foden. The, 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 Mount is a starter, but Foden's not necessarily going to start. Depends on England progressing. Um, Chiesa would be a potential as well. But I think looking at Enrique's team, I watched the friendly against Portugal. Um, he really likes him, you know, and he, I think he's got that space on the right kind of nailed on. Um, he had a couple of chances. I think he, worked, he links up quite well with Morata. Um, and I think he's got a chance of scoring a couple of goals. I mean, who knows what team, you know, Spain are going to send out like a, a pub team at this rate if they all get COVID. Who knows what will happen? But, you know, if they're all OK, then I think um, he's got a great chance of starting all the games and a chance of making an impression. And he's relatively fresh, I think. He hasn't been a, a you know regular. He's been rotated a fair amount this season. But, I mean, yeah, George, what, what would your take on it be? Yeah, I, I'm a really big fan of Ferran Torres. When we first signed him, it was kind of like, right, OK, see what you can do. But watching Ferran Torres for ages, even Aguero stopped doing it in his later years. We didn't have a player that just loved getting into the box on the end of things. You just see a ball go flying across the face of goal with no one trying to get on the end of it. And even though he plays on the wing, he's just got that, he's got that sixth sense of knowing where to be at the right time. And I've watched him a lot on international duty as well. And he just obviously loves playing it. He's got a manager in Luis Enrique that believes in him, which I think is so important for a player like Ferran Torres. Um, yeah, for a young player this morning, I'd, I'd definitely see him in a shout. But also, it obviously it depends how fast Spain go. Because I mean, yeah. I'm of the belief I think they will do quite well. But you know, if they completely collapse after the group stage and, and have an early exit, we're not going to hear any more of Ferran Torres. So you need Spain to have a very good tournament. And if they do, I think Ferran Torres might be at the heart of that. Uh, but again, obviously, you discount for injuries, which you, you can't really foresee. But uh, but yeah, if Spain go far, and Ferran Torres obviously does get injured. I think he's in with a shout. Yeah, sorry, Neil. Just going to have to mute you there, mate. I think your computer's about to explode, but that's all right. Uh, let's finish things off, gents, with our best bets of the tournament. You've given away a ton of picks today, but uh, Nigel, mate, if you had to sum everything up that you've said today, what is your most favourite pick for the day? Uh, Belgium, Denmark, dual forecast, Group B, anything around even money. All right, terrific. Uh, George, you can go next, mate. 
Yeah, basically the same except for Netherlands and Ukraine dual forecast, either first or second for either. Uh, either sorry, around two point two. That is, I'd, I'd still have evens on that. To be fair, um, anything above evens, get on that. Awesome, and Neil. Yeah, I'm just going to make it clean sweep. I'm going to agree with these guys. I, I really like their bet, so yeah, I'll go with that. Oh, bloody <laughs> hell, man! <laughs> Pay you all this money, <laughs> mate, and and that's the way, and that's what you give me. Maybe just throw it. Maybe you want to accumulate them together. Yeah. Maybe. Well, yeah, no, that that Lukaku France one, I really like that. At those odds, I, I do like it. Okay. All right. There we go. Love it. Gents, terrific stuff. And and throughout the tournament, we'll be hoping to get you all on. We'll be doing live streams just about every day or, I mean, maybe every second day, something like that, four or five times a week. So that will be very, very enjoyable. And we'll try and preview the match days rather than just giving you this kind of outright preview. Um, so I know Neil will be along for most of the ride and then hopefully George and Nigel can chime in whenever they're available. Um, but in the meantime, the most important thing you can do is go and follow these gentlemen on their respective avenues. So for George, you can follow him at C George Gamble on Twitter. He's got two Twitters. That's how good he is. You can also follow him at George underscore C G G. Um, and he's also working for the man on your top right corner of your screen on premiersportsplays.com covering Copper America. I mean, if we're lucky, we might even get a few Copper America picks out of him one day. Uh, Nigel, you can find him at Sealy underscore Nigel. And you can follow his stuff for the for the Euros at premiersportsplays.com. And finally, bottom left corner of your screen, Neil Shah. You can find him on Twitter at My Better Life. And you can also check out his website slash blog, mybetterlife.com. Gents, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much for coming on. I hope you're all very excited for the tournament. And I look forward to catching up as the tournament goes along. Yeah, cheers, Alex. Cheers for having us. Uh, off yeah. you go back to those girls now. Come on, in that red room. I see you. I can put on the... Um, if you just give me one moment, I could probably put on a little strobe light for you. I, I thought you were going to put on uh, Roxanne by the police. Right? <laughs> you don't have to put on the red light, Roxanne. Look at that. I've got all sorts of colours. And I'll that's on for the... free. <laughs> put on the red light. All right, I think we call it a day. See you, gents. <laughs>